five work and slicer tips that could instantly improve your prints and yet most people don't even know they're there. Some of these features are enabled by default and seem totally harmless, but they might be quietly ruining your results. In this video, I'll show you exactly what to check, what to fix, and how to unlock the full potential of your slicer. We'll be using Bevel Lab P1P with the default profiles throughout the video, but don't worry, these tips apply no matter what printer you're using with Arca Slicer. And the first tip that we are going to be talking about is the precise walls. So you're gonna click on the quality tab and then you're going to scroll until you find the precision setting. And then you're going to click on precise walls. And this is a very important setting if you do technical models that do need dimension precision. And the reason for that is because by turning on these settings, you are going to ensure that the outer wall is incredibly well laid and precise. I'm going to show you a small illustration that kind of tells you what it does. So when you turn it on, what happens is, well, if you look at the precise wall off, it kind of overlays a little bit the inner walls with the outer wall. So it creates a little bit of overlay in order to ensure that it's better or dear one lay to the other and it creates a little bit more strength on the surface. However, when you turn it on, it does create the overlay on the inner walls, but the outer wall is completely preserved. So it's preserved on the dimension that you need. So it does not squeeze the wall a little bit to the side it ensures a better precision when we are talking about these measures. By turning it on, if you slice it, it's not like you're going to see any difference in the G-code because this is very tiny and very minor. However, you do have the precision in the model. So now let's go to tip number two. And this one is a little bit more beginner friendly, but whenever we have articulated models, if you wish to put some brim to better adhere the model to your print bed, this is what happens and it's a incredibly painful to remove this brim from the outside. So one thing that you can do is you can click over here and then you're going to select the pieces, the regions where you would like to apply a little bit of brim. So you're going to click on a few different spots whenever you find like there's a spot like say here to this tail, they wish to add a little bit of brim, this little finger right here. Uh, so you can add brim to specific locations and you can avoid places like the articulation. But if you look closely, what's saying here is warning, the brim type is not set to painted, the brim ears will not take effect. So you go on brim type and then you choose the painted one. Once you slice it, you will see that you have applied brim only to very specific parts of the model. And this is a big, big, big advantage, especially on those hard to print models. There are a lot of models that do demand you to use a little bit of brim. But if you put the overall brim type, you're going to spend hours and hours removing that brim. And that's not what you want. If you're enjoying this video, make sure to like it and subscribe to our channel to get more useful 3D printing tips with us. And don't forget that this month we are having our three year anniversary promo with STL Flix and STL Academy, three years of unlimited content, which means that every model that we have already launched is going to be available plus the models that we will launch for the next three years. Also, you get access to our entire library of courses, which we have seven different courses at the moment, plus every course that we release in the next three years. So this is an incredibly good deal that is almost running out. So make sure to check in the link below. Third tip, and this one is a little bit more advanced. You have to know what you are doing. When I first left the Cura Slicer, one of the things that he had over there that it was very good was the make overhang printable. It was a feature over there that does not exist until very recently on Arca Slicer. But what it basically does is you have this model. Let me paint it here to show you. I'm going to put uh, 30 degrees to show you the visible overhangs. And now you can see all these red spots are overhangs where the angle is lesser than 30 degrees, which means that by printing that there is a possibility 
that we do have a little bit of that filament fading in that specific position. This model is a chess piece from SL. If you print it in its original scale, it's very small, it's not going to be visible. But we have scaled it up to a very big size to print a few color tests of it here. So now we had to make it available. Okay, so now let's click on the search feature right here and write make overhang printable. And you will find it under the overhang tab. Then you have to turn it on. It's going to ask you, do you know what you are doing? Because this is going to deform the original geometry. And then you can click on enable, all right? Okay, so if you slice it up, you might not notice at first, but every surface that was creating an overhang, it created a surface over there that makes the overhang more tolerable. So here in the chin, you can see really well. In the eye, you can also see it a little bit. If you compare to the original model, you will see that we do have different surface over there. It's generating a different surface. Okay, let's slice it up. And now, as you can see, we never see the blue light in here because it's covering the entire overhang. Uh, it does change the geometry, it creates new surfaces to adapt it to the, a geometry that would make it with zero overhang. So if I turn it off like that and uh, slice it again, you will see that we have the blue zones all over the place, all over where we have overhangs. So this change the geometry, it's an incredibly useful tip. But you do have to wear it, use it wisely, because if you use it on a model that you do need to make it fit, that you need to uh, place it somewhere, that you need to glue with other pieces, you might ruin your print, because this is effectively changing the geometry, okay? So just make sure to have that on uh, whenever you have a model that you just want to exhibit is something that it's going to be a decoration, that you don't need it to be at that specific geometry, okay? But it is a useful tip, do try it out because I think it does save you quite a bit, especially when you are having excess overhangs on the model. Now let's go to tip number four, and this is something that it is sneakily turned on and it might be costing some quality to your prints, okay? So at the slicer, we're going to go in the last tab, which is others, and then if you scroll down, you will see that there is the reduce in fill retraction if you activate the g-code in here and you see the movement inside you will see that with it turned off as it is right now it does make a lot of small retractions i've specifically selected the the lighting infill to show you that it creates uh small retractions in each one of the sections where it might collide with itself. So whenever it finishes a path, it will make a small retraction. So now I'm going to turn it on and see what happens. All right, so with this on, as you can see, all those little retraction spots are no longer there, which means that the nozzle is moving around with that bit of plastic hanging and it's hitting inside every one of these uh, little spots of the infill that we have not retracted priorly, okay? And what this does, it creates a lot of different problems. The first one, it can tilt and take your piece off the build plate. It can take your parts off the build plate. So if you have this thing, and it's very easy to notice, that you see your nozzle scraping your model, most likely it's because you do have this feature turned on in the first place and you can turn it off because you do have a little bit of dripping of that ooze that we have out of the nozzle that it's going to be passing on the model so this is a very useful tip and not a lot of people know about it so make sure to check what changes for you if this is actually happening with you and see if you can apply this technique now let's go to the fifth and last tip of this video so this is when you have a recess in a hole and you do need a little bit of overhang like in this situation that we have right here, all right? So imagine that you would have to put a nut and a bolt in here and you need this recess to be facing the table, right? Facing your print bed. What you have in here is a situation where you could apply some support, but then you would have that surface with the support that does not look that well. Under the quality tab, you have bridge counter board holes and we have two options partially bridged or sacrificial layer. Let's show the partially bridged first, all right? So once we slice it down, what you will see is that creates a partial bridge on each side of the hole that it kind of holds the perimeter of that hole. So when you, do, when you look the first perimeter, it does have a little bit of a bridge hanging that hole. It does have a little bit of an overlay of the hole 
and the bridges that you have over there all right so after it does completely uh, it creates a second layer on top of that and you will not see this bridge kind of disrupting your hole so this is a good thing that you can create that bridge is going to be efficiently but it's not going to block the hole whereas if we put the sacrificial layer what it does it creates a full layer under your hole so with the, what this layer does it creates a bridge that is going to hold the entire perimeter of the hole that you're going to do on top of that so if you have uh, if you're using nut and bolts or if you want to put something that it's going to go inside this hole, you can just press it in and break it because this is a sacrificial layer. It's made to be broken or you can try to remove using some sort of cutting tool, whatever tools you have available over there. And this was the fifth and last tip of the day. And these were the five tips. I hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, click the like button, share this video with someone that you think you will find it useful and also subscribe to our channel. If you want to learn more and go deeper with your 3D printing skills, make sure to check STL Academy for more in-depth content about entrepreneurship, 3D modeling, and a lot of other cool courses that you find it over there. And also make sure to check STL Flix for an incredible library of premium design to print models. See you next time and happy printing.